still exploring Kyushu's hidden treasures. I find myself in Oita Prefecture, in the river town of Hita. The town was a place of prominence during the Edo era, when it was under the direct control of the shogunate. Its preserved buildings give us a peek into early Japanese history. Here in Mamedamachi, there are a lot of little shops with all the local products from uh, rice cracker to fabrics to antique shops. It's a very nice, interesting walk around this area. Little has changed here since the Edo period, and they say you can even navigate these streets with an old map from that time. The samurai spirit lives on in the buildings and small streets of this town. One can even hear the clacking sound of wooden sandals on its cobblestone streets. The small town of Hita has been known for being the leading producer of geta, or traditional Japanese wooden sandals. These wooden sandals have been traditionally worn with a kimono, with the added height preventing the kimono from brushing the ground. I get to know the Motono family, who has made Geta sandals for three generations now. Hiroaki-san took over the family business from his father, who started it. Today, he runs the business with his wife and his son, Masayuki. So how did Geta sandals uh, begin in Hita? I see. So that's why it's popular here because of the cedar wood. Okay. Cedar wood is said to provide a soft cushion and comfortable fit. The wood is cut into the sandal shape and sanded before being lacquered. Masayuki san is the third generation maker of Geta and is known in the local Japanese media as the Geta Prince. So you're interested because you see your father work when you were young or because your father liked you to continue the business? Geta so I like father, I like son. <laughs> so you also look alike. <laughs> Polish and lacquer are applied to the wood and left to dry out. Different fabric patterns can be sewn to make the toe strap. The dad and son does a lot of other things, like sanding, painting, but the real head and boss of the business is the mom. <laughs> Mrs. Motono is also very hands-on with the sandal-making process, carefully fastening and knotting each strap onto the sandals. This is more difficult than I thought. <laughs> They make about 1,500 pairs in a month and make deliveries to other prefectures. With Japan's aging population, passing on an old tradition has become an urgent matter. It was good to see young people appreciating good craftsmanship and being equally passionate to continue them. From Oita Prefecture, I made my way to my final stop Fukuoka. Here, I was invited for lunch by Kubara-san and other members of the AOPA who are based in the area. Kubara-san has been to the Philippines many times and has joined me in many flying adventures. I was very happy to see him and catch up with old flying buddies. Fukuoka is known for holding the national sumo tournament in the region of Kyushu. Small restaurants in the area specialize in feeding sumo wrestlers. And while I cannot wrestle like them, I can definitely eat like one. They serve the traditional chankonabe, or sumo wrestler's meal. 
It is actually a very balanced meal with meat, vegetables, tofu and noodles, all simmering in a pot. Four friends can share a pot of chankonabe that is meant for just one sumo wrestler. Kyushu offers historic treasures and natural beauty. It is the Japan of old. Undisturbed by modernity, but still keeping up with the future. A place where gods and mortals coexist, and where people and nature have lived together in harmony for centuries. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari. Thank you.